Getting all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe But that's alright Hush What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the World of Juice channel and welcome to what I believe will be our most successful series to date. That is right. Last year during the Madden 24 cycle, towards the end of it, I started up a relocation franchise and brought football to... Hawaii. We relocated the Arizona Cardinals to Honolulu, Hawaii and created the Honolulu Desperados. Now, the only reason I picked the Desperados was because I did that on PC and on Madden 24. Obviously, you guys know if you've been around the channel a lot, there was a lot of modding going on on Madden 24 and I was a big fan of modding. And one of the mods happened to be a Jersey redo and, uh, improvement for a majority of the relocation teams that Madden gives you as a base. The Desperados were one of them. I liked the way that the modder changed the jerseys, so I chose the Desperados, and the rest is history. We went 11 years. I think we won five Super Bowls. We we created some legends. It was awesome. It, it, was, it was a great series. I had a lot of fun doing it, and at the end of that, I said that I wasn't sure when I was going to do another one like this because I wasn't sure when the modders were going to be able to get into Madden 25, if at all. And as of recording this video, they still have not been able to get into Madden 25 to start modding the game. So if that eventually does happen, I will certainly be on PC doing some Madden modding. And, uh, and making some videos and stuff and making some content on that. But until that happens, we're stuck with console gaming. So PS5, we are here. It is another relocation series, but it's a special relocation series because we're not just moving a team just to move a team. We're bringing some historical significance to this move and to this series. I, as you probably already know from the title and the thumbnail, I have brought football back to St. Louis. They've had a troubled history with NFL teams, only the one really. Not as obviously not as as difficult of a of a history as like maybe say Oakland who had a team, lost it to LA, had a had a team again, lost it to Vegas. I mean, they lost their team twice, not to mention they lost their basketball team to San Francisco who moved out of Oakland to San Francisco, so they moved to the bougie part of uh of California and then now they're even losing their baseball team to Vegas. So Oakland's had a Oakland's a whole nother thing. Maybe next year we do, or maybe later on down the line in this in the Mad 25 cycle, we do a uh an Oakland relocation thing or something like that, just to give the fans over there a little bit more hope. But St. Louis has also had a pretty rough time uh losing the Rams to LA and then not ever really knowing. They're kind of in like a limbo period of are we going to get a team back? I mean, obviously they're not going to get the Rams back, so they're going to lose all that history, all that, all the championships the Rams have won under that name. And I like, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, I'm sure that when the when the NFL expands, and they will expand because owners like money. So when the NFL eventually expands, teams will get given to cities like St. Louis again, and there will be football back there. So. Until that happens, it's up to us to give the fans of St. Louis a little bit of hope. And that is what I've done. I've brought St. Louis football back to the city. Now, unfortunately, we can't do the Rams. I mean, I could have moved the Rams back from L.A. to St. Louis. I could have done that, but I, could, I can't get the logo, obviously, because I can't mod. So I, I can't get the old logo back. So instead of the St. Louis Rams, we've got ourselves the St. Louis Blues. And I know it's it's a generic basic name. It's it's what you're 
it's, you're limited options when you're doing <laughs> relocation in Madden. Uh, and I was going through all the teams and I was, I was putting like St. Louis, this St. Louis, that I was trying to figure out what team, what team name fits with the city of St. Louis. And I was going through all of them. Like St. Louis dragons kind of works. Uh, the St. Louis, uh, pioneers, the St. Louis, whatever that's Redwood. Like there's a bunch of different team names that Madden generic team names that they give you. Uh, and I kept going back to blues and I was trying to think of maybe like some historical significance with the city from like back when they were founded or just in their history as a, as a city in, uh, in the U S like I was just trying to figure out some sort of significance. Now I know that like blues music is more like a, uh, new Orleans type of thing, right. Or maybe like a tennis, a Nashville type. Of, I don't know. It's some, it's something else other than St. Louis, but I just felt like, the St. Louis Blues felt a little bit better. Like it rolled off the tongue a little bit. So I chose the St. Louis Blues. We've relocated. Oh, I, I haven't even mentioned the team that we relocated. Out of all the teams in the NFL, there's only like two or three that really nobody cares about if you relocate them. Like you obviously can't relocate the Cowboys. You can't relocate the Patriots. You can't relocate the Steelers. You can't relocate the the Niners, the 49ers, or or the, the Chiefs. Like, you can't relocate these iconic teams, but there's really only, like, the Texans, the Cardinals, and the Jaguars. Those are three teams that you really can get away with relocating. And since we already relocated the Cardinals with the Desperados last year, I figured I can't go back to the same exact division with this year's thing. So I've chosen the Jacksonville Jaguars. We've relocated them. I feel bad for their fans, but... There's been a ton of rumors that they were going to move to London anyway, even though I, that's probably not going to happen anymore. But there's it's been like a decade of rumors that they were going to move to, to London. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Maybe it still will. Who knows? Uh, but I have moved the Jaguars from Jacksonville to St. Louis. And it helps because, I mean, really those three teams, the Texans, Cardinals, and Jaguars, have not a lot of history. I mean, the Cardinals do, but not a lot of winning history. I mean, the, the Jaguars' best seasons were when they first got there in the league, and then they had a bunch of bad seasons, and then they made, like, an AFC championship in 2017 or 2018, whatever it was, when it was uh, Blake Bortles versus <laughs> Tom Brady for the, the AFC championship. That's like, And when they had Saxonville, that's, like, their most recent run of success until, like, a couple years ago when they made the playoffs with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, but who knows what's going to happen now. So we don't care about the Jaguars. They don't have a lot of great winning history, so... We've scrubbed that all. That's all gone. That can stay in Jacksonville. We're going to bring our own success, our own history, back to St. Louis. Forget about the Rams. Forget about the Jaguars. This is St. Louis blue territory now. So with all that being said, let's go and meet the team and run over what's going to happen in this series, basically. So hope you guys are going to enjoy. If you do, Leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, and let's go meet the St. Louis Blues. Here we are at week number one, our inaugural game against the Miami Dolphins. As you can see, we have moved to the AFC South. We have changed the Jaguars to the St. Louis Blues, and we are now involved. It's a very blue conference now, that, or a very blue division I'm seeing uh, with all the different variations of blue from all four teams, but... This is the roster. Now, I want to, before we show the roster, I want to say, I constructed this roster myself. I built it in the base roster, edit roster thing on, on the, the main menu. And I gave myself three captains on offense and three captains on defense. So those captains can be like a high overall player, like a 95 plus overall player, somebody that I trust to take this team into the future. Now, they can be older guys, they can be younger guys, whatever they may be, but I've chosen three captains on offense, three captains on defense. They're all wearing the C, uh, and that is the, that's the top tier of the team. The rest of the team is built on younger players, some older people, some expiring contracts, some long-term contracts. There's a lot of mix of different things, and here's some low overall guys, some higher overall guys, and basically... I built this similar to how I built the Desperados in the original episode, and I 
wanted to use a lot of guys that I've never really used in a, in a franchise before. Like, I, I use a lot of the same guys because I know that they're easier to acquire or they're always end up in free agency and you always sign them because they're just always there. So I tried to go for when I was building this roster, I tried to go for guys that I don't normally ever have on a team. Some of the guys I've had on teams before, but I tried to get guys that I never really get on teams because I, I just want to use them. And the way that we're going to do this is, is going to follow the same format as the Desperado series. So each episode will be half a season. We'll simulate games. We'll jump into a few here and there. And we'll get through seasons, two episodes per season. Because half a season, half a season, obviously. So, and then obviously playoffs if we make that. And then off-season episodes. So you, you guys know the, the, the drill. You know the format because it's going to follow the same exact format as the Desperados. So that way we can get through more seasons. And that's how we ended up with 11 seasons of Desperado football. So that's all being mentioned. So now it's time to finally show you guys the roster and I'll go over who I chose as my three captains on offense and defense. So here is the offense. Now maybe a little bit, you might need to take a step back and, and focus. These are all guys, except for Paris Johnson Jr., that I don't really ever get on a Madden roster. Starting with the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, I just chose to keep, it, keep him as the quarterback of the Blues when we transition from Jaguars to Blues because I, just, I, like, I mean, we need a quarterback that's not a great overall, but still has some chance to develop in the future. And Trevor being already a 24-year-old superstar development, 77 overall, I was like, that's a perfect guy. So I chose Trevor Lawrence to be the, the quarterback of the, the St. Louis Blues. He's kind of that last holdover, uh, one of the last holdovers from the Jaguars that move over to St. Louis. But as you can see, he is not a captain, which is kind of weird. Usually quarterbacks are your cap, one of your captains. But Trevor Lawrence is not one of my captains. My captains, you probably have already noticed, are going to be Amon Ross St. Brown. He's my well, he's one of my offensive captains, X-Factor, 24 years old. I never, ever have Amon Ross St. Brown or C.D. Lamb on any of my teams, mainly because they're just super, super good and they never leave the Cowboys and Lions. But C.D. Lamb is also one of my offensive captains. Now, it might be a little bit of a risk to have two wide receivers as your offense, two of your three offensive captains. But I wanted both of these guys, and they're such a high overall that I had to make them the captains to make it make sense. But the guys behind them are not super high overall. So it kind of ha we have those two top tier guys, and then below them, we have Noah Brown, we have Christian Watson for speed, we have Quentin Johnston, who I thought would be a fun little project to see if we could turn him into something, and then we have the rookie, Brian Thomas Jr., who was another one of the holdovers from Jacksonville that comes over uh, to St. Louis. The running back position is Isaiah Pacheco, and he is our third offensive captain. He's just too high of an overall to not have him be the offensive captain. He is the third highest rated player on the offense, I think. So he has to be an offensive captain, and he is. So he is a superstar. He's an 87 overall plus the one to make him an 88. So he is our third offensive captain. Now, I was debating between him or Sam Laporta because they're basically the same overall, but... I chose Isaiah Pacheco. Now, obviously, these captains can change over the years as players move on or they get they start to regress a little bit. All these, obviously, these different things. Maybe we make trades. Maybe we draft somebody. Whoever it may, whatever it may be, these captains will probably change. They won't always be St. Brown, C.D. Lamb, and, and whatever, whatever else it may be. So, just wanted to say that as well. But those are my three captains. We have C.D. Lamb, Isaiah Pacheco, and St. Brown. I'm going to say Brown as our three offensive captains. The rest of the team is made up of Ezekiel Elliott and Blake Corum. The offense line is Deion Dawkins, Jonah Jackson, Garrett Bradbury, Shaq Mason, and Paris Johnson Jr. With backups being Anton Harrison, Josh Myers. Obviously, I had to put Will Clapp on the team. Then we've got uh, Dewan Jones, who I love. One of my favorite players, Dewan Jones. We don't have a lot of offensive line depth because a lot of our offensive line depth is in the practice squad, I think, right? I mean, I have, here's some of the other guys that I have. I have Joe Milton on the team. Yeah, here's Daniel Falele and Kenyon Green. We have a couple offensive linemen on and uh, Foster as well. So some of our other offensive line depth is on the practice squad, which there's no practice squad st stealing. So these, these guys will be on our team for the entire season. That is what our offense looks like. Our tight ends are Sam Laporta, Kyle Pitts, and Nikhil Harry for the memes. I had to, As a Patriots fan, I had to. I had to put Nikhil Harry on here because he's now a tight end. So I had to experiment with, with Nikhil Harry. That is the offense. 
Oh, our backup quarterback is Jameis Winston because you got to have Jameis Winston. He's eating W's. He, he's literally eating W's. You got to have him on the team. And then we have Spencer Rattler, and you saw Joe Milton on the practice squad. A couple young rookies that maybe turn into something. I don't know, maybe, possibly. You never know, probably not, but wanted to give him a shot. So that is our offense. Defense, the three captains on the defense are going to be Roquan Smith at middle linebacker. We have a middle linebacker, a D tackle, and a corner as our three uh, captains. So Roquan Smith has got the captain C for the linebacking core. Then we've got ourselves Chris Jones. You obviously saw the, the three X factors. Those are the three captains. Chris Jones and Jalen Ramsey. Those are our three captains of the defense. Now, this is a little bit more interesting because unlike the offense where two of the three captains are 24 years old, Roquan Smith, Chris Jones, and Jalen Ramsey are all pretty old now. I mean, Ramsey and Jones, I think, are both 30. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think Jalen's still in his 20s, is he? I'd be shocked if he was. Is he still in his 20s? He's 29, so he's basically 30. <laughs> he's basically 30, so he'll be 30 pretty soon. So, and Roquan, Roquan's probably 27, 28. How old is Roquan? He's 27, okay. So, our guys are a little bit, our defensive captains are a little bit old. Not too much older, but, but Chris Jones is. But they're slightly more experienced than our offensive captains, except for CD. But those are our three defensive captains. Then to back up with the linebacking core, we've got rookie Dallas Turner. We've got Baron Browning and Tommy Eichenberg because I couldn't have a team without Tommy Eichenberg. Trenton Simpson as the middle linebacker to the running mate of Roquan Smith. Kayvon Thibodeau and Chop Robinson because I'm a big Chop Robinson guy. So I wanted to have him a part of this team. And Kayvon Thibodeau because I never really ever get Kayvon Thibodeau. Our corners, or our D-line, is Will Anderson Jr., Trayvon Walker, another one of those holdouts from the Jaguars. Will Anderson Jr. and Chase Young, along with Tyree Wilson. D-tackles are, uh, obviously, Chris Jones, B.J. Hill, Tavondre Sweat, Mason Smith, another Jaguar holdout, and then, uh, is it Taylor Davis? Tyler Davis? I think it's Tyler. Yeah, Tyler Davis, who I think is on the... Where's he at? Is he... Is he in the Steelers now? I forget where he got drafted to. Wherever he is, he's now in St. Louis. Our corners, Jalen Ramsey, Denzel Ward. I picked Denzel Ward because of all the controversy going on with him right now with the concussions. Is he going to have to retire? Like, there's a lot of stuff going on with Denzel Ward, so I wanted to play with him uh, if this could be his last game, if he has to retire. So, I wanted to play with him. Then you've got Campbell, Tyson Campbell. you got Christian Gonzalez because we needed a nice young stud and i love christian gonzalez so we have him on the team and then we have the white boy cooper DeGene because i mean he's he's a white corner of course i had to have him on the team cooper DeGene is here safeties are malik hooker they're very buckeye coded malik hooker and jordan fuller are starting safeties uh, i don't think played on the same buckeye team i don't think they did seven years in the league for malik hooker he was was malik hooker on that championship team in 2014 he might have been where did jordan fuller, jordan fuller play Four, okay, yeah, they, they weren't on the same team. I didn't think they were, but I couldn't remember exactly. It's been a long time. It's a lot of years that I got to think back to. So those are our starting safeties. Safeties. Then we have Tyler Newbin, I think he's a giant in real life, uh, and then Reed Blankenship because he's another white safety. I'm, I'm another, if, you, if you're going to have white DBs in the league that are actually decent, I'm going to put them on my team because that's just funny. So we've got a couple white DBs who may be making an impact, you never know. And he is our backup safety. And then I have DeMar Hamlin, but this is not the real DeMar Hamlin. Obviously, the real DeMar Hamlin passed away. Uh, <laughs> this is the fake DeMar Hamlin. I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, whatever, he's fake. He'll never see the field, though, so <laughs> it doesn't matter if he's real or not. That is our defense. The three captains, Roquan Smith, Chris Jones, and Jalen Ramsey. Special teams is the same kicker. From, oh, I didn't even mention we have Kool-Aid McKinstry because he wasn't shown on the, the cornerback screen. But yeah, Kool-Aid McKinstry's there too. Uh, but Cam Little, same kicker the Jaguars had originally. And then Tory Taylor, I think is his name, Tory? Yeah, Tory Taylor, the big uh, six foot four, 27-year-old punter who just got drafted this year, I think by Chicago, I think. So he's our, he's our punter, but we don't care about that. <laughs> so that is, that is the team. Offensive captains defensive captains everything now you may be wondering juice that's a lot of high overall players are you going to be dominating the league maybe a lot of this is going to be simulation so you never know uh but when i jump into games you guys know i suck so it's probably not it's probably not going to help out too much and speaking of domination and simulation which could happen 
this is our schemes and playbook. Oh, I didn't even mention our coach is a female. Just because I, I thought that's a new addition this year. I thought that could be pretty fun. Uh, so we've got Miss Juice instead of Mr. Juice. She's uh, she's head coaching the St. Louis Blues. Our offensive scheme is vertical zone run, 82% scheme fit. It was our highest one. And then base 3-4 for an 88% scheme fit on defense. It was our also our highest one. And then we're running Dallas offense and Pittsburgh defense for our playbooks because I feel like we have CeeDee Lamb, we have Trevor Lawrence. I feel like Dallas offense would fit pretty well. And then defensively, I picked the Steelers because we've got guys like Thibodeau who can play that TJ Watt role. We've got a guy like Chris Jones who can play that Cam Hayward role. Or I guess Chase Young can play that Cam Hayward role, whatever it may be. And then we've got Jalen Ramsey who can play that Joey Porter Jr. role and just pick off a bunch of passes. So hopefully those will correlate and we will have uh, good results in this series. Now, the one major thing that we have to worry about is cap space because I have a lot of high overall players on this team which are getting paid a lot of money. Our most expensive player is obviously our quarterback, but the good thing about that is he is locked up for seven seasons. He just got his max extension, no longer on his rookie deal. He is locked up for a long time so as long as he develops we won't have to worry about quarterback for seven seasons if he doesn't develop we may need to trade him and either draft somebody or trade him for another quarterback there's going to be a lot of interesting things if trevor lawrence doesn't develop we have chris jones he is 30 years old now but he has his new contract amin ross St. brown is also on a five-year contract as well we've got a lot of our big time guys locked up for a while but that that could be looked at as a good thing but it also could be looked at as a bad thing because we have a lot of high overall guys that are locked up for a long time and are very expensive. There not, might not be a lot of wiggle room to get younger guys in and develop. And I did that by design. I wanted to make it a little bit more of a challenge. If I was going to have all these high overall guys on the team to start out with, I wanted to make sure there was some way that we would be hindered by having these overalls high overalls on our team and by doing that you 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 can't have salary cap space so we have not any salary cap space as of right now maybe when it rolls over and all that stuff we will end up having some space but i wanted to make it a little bit of a trickery of a type of thing a little bit of a strategery you could say it's a strategic advantage to have or maybe a strategic disadvantage to have these guys with these massive contracts because we have how many guys one two three, four, five guys that are all over or at a hundred million dollars, which is very, very crazy. We'll see if we can maintain this. Maybe in a couple of years, we have to let all these guys go and we're back down to square one. That's that. That's the interesting thing about a series like this. You saw that in the Desperados towards the end of that series. We had to let go of a lot of guys that were mainstays of the franchise because we just couldn't pay them because we just simply didn't have the money we were paying other guys that we needed more and we just couldn't pay those guys so we now have a similar situation that could happen in this and that just adds different levels to it it adds different avenues we could go down do we trade trevor lawrence if he's not developing to try to free up that contract like there's so many different things that we could do that are implemented and could happen because of all these high contracts so we'll see what happens down the line but we are paying a lot of guys a lot of money and we're even paying some guys that aren't that good like we're paying jonah jackson 51 million dollars for the next three seasons he's a 77 overall now maybe he goes up a little bit but that's still a lot of money for a guy that's sub 80 trayvon walker's getting paid a decent amount of money jalen ramsey he's 29 he's gonna get over 30 he's gonna be getting paid a lot he's not getting paid that much but he's gonna get paid uh, a good amount and obviously like cd lamb he's gonna need a new contract so i mean like there's there's a lot of different interesting things that are gonna have to happen here chase young's gonna need a new contract he's on pennies right now obviously we talked about cd lamb pacheco's gonna need a new contract in a couple years blankenship kyle pitts is gonna like there's it's it's very interesting it's gonna be very very interesting the next couple of years to see just how we can manage the salary cap if we can keep this team around how long would this team stay around because i think in the desperados we let some of those guys walk pretty soon into the series 
because we just didn't have the money to pay them. Now, the last thing we're going to do in today's episode, because we're not going to play any games or anything like that, that'll be for the next episode. This is basically just for meeting the team and doing all that kind of stuff, getting the, the basics foundation of the series started. The last thing we're going to do is check the draft class, load it in, and see if there's going to be any talent. Now, there is a wide receiver at the top of the class, but there's three quarterbacks at the top of the class. Penn State, Wake Forest, and Oklahoma State. Okay, very, very interesting. Now, obviously, we just literally loaded this in, so we don't know anything about them. But there's an outside linebacker, and there is a wide receiver also in the top five. Very, very interesting. It looks like it could be a pretty strong quarterback class. I mean, there's four guys that are projected round one at least. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. There's only one running back in the first round, and he might not even go in the first round. There's... A lot of wide receivers that could go first round. It's going to be an interesting draft as well. And we have all the Jaguars picks because we obviously took over the Jaguars. So if we go to our draft capital, NFL rosters, draft capital, we've got ourselves the first round pick, the second round pick, two third round picks, and a fourth round, two fourth round picks because Jaguars obviously traded with Minnesota. So we have two thirds, two fours, a five, a six, and a seven. And then obviously all of our other picks except for the Lions' seventh round picks. So we have all the Jaguars' picks. We could move those picks. We could acquire more picks with trading some of our players that we have on the team right now. I don't know. It's possible. Haven't really decided yet if I want to trade anybody. But as you can see, we'd have to trade somebody if we want to free up all this cap space that we have. So there's a lot of different interesting things that could happen in this series. And I'm very excited to get started in the next episode. I hope you guys are too. If you are, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Let me know down below in the comments if you are as excited as I am to see a relocation series back on the channel. Because I had such a fun time doing the Desperados. And it was one of the farthest I've ever gotten. Maybe even the farthest into a, a series I've ever gotten. We went, I think, 11 seasons seasons in there and we won like five championships five or six championships i think it was five and we just had a lot of good fun we we created a legend in jonathan young at quarterback we created the legend of b john robinson and micah parsons two of the greatest desperados of all time the two greatest desperados of all time uh jalen waddle and Devonte smith had great careers for us we created some other legends that were auto-generated rookies like it was it was a, a fun series we created some channel legends and hopefully we can do that again in this series so if you enjoyed this video please leave a like subscribe to the channel join the juice club thank you so much stop by and watch i truly appreciate it next episode will be week one through week number 10 so i hope you guys are excited for that thank you so much stop by and watching i truly appreciate it and i will catch you guys in the next one Peace.